Tonight, uh -oh. I try to open a barrel oh, with an AK. That can opener, David eats some leaves for sustenance, and then uneats some leaves for sustenance, <laughs> and I screw on some caps. You know me, I enjoy a good value buy for guns, which is why some of my favorite videos are about guns that outperform their competitors at a cut price. But the problem with budget guns is the buyer's attraction to budget attachments, like how divorced people typically end up attracting other divorced people. And do you really want that much baggage in your range baggage? Now I know what you're thinking, we can't all just print money like the federal government, so what are some options that offer a favorable balance between value and performance? Well, let's consider the Burris RT6. It's a 1 to 6 LPVO scope with a 24 millimeter tube and this PEPR quick detach AR mount. These were sent to me from Burris for review, so thank you to them. They gave no obligation of outcome, and thanks to Cat over at Global Ordnance for making that hookup happen. This seems like a great time to say thank you to Global Ordnance for providing ammo for this video and many others, so I will. We used Igman 55 grain 223 full metal jacket for the majority of the video, including zeroing the optic at 60 yards. That's a good sound right there. We also used some Arsenal Global Ordnance 762 by 39 steel 122 grain and a little bit of brass 123 grain. Check out the link in the pinned comment below for ammo deals and other goodies. Test guns for this were the POF Renegade Plus, which is quite dope. This is a good gun. A review coming up on this in the future. A PSA AKP, which you know I love. And a not so stellar test upper from Bear Creek Arsenal, the GPX Piston Upper, which I was also reviewing at the time. Light Unfortunately, that last right one suffered from light primer strikes, which has been an issue with oh my God, Bear Creek Arsenal serious? products in the past. We shot about one and a half mags. Right there. Very spaced Paced out. out. Three shots at a time. So it's 120 right now, right where I put my hand. It's, it's pretty toasty. And the and piston the system made the block and the nearby handguard unacceptably hot. So I sent that bitch back to Bear Creek Arsenal for evaluation. No hate, their customer service has been good, and it's a new product, you gotta work the kinks out. But you know what budget gun hasn't given me a lick of trouble and still defies logic for how good it shoots? The EP9. And conveniently, this episode is sponsored by XR USA. American made, quality, affordable, those words rarely go together anymore, but with X-Star, it's a reality. Shill alert, shill alert. Kiss my ass. Got a shill over here. Anyways, they're great folks. They sent me a new version of their Glock style mag and fixed the only issue I had with the pre-released ones, namely seating issues. They also have some other cool products coming down the pipes. So check them out, support the underdogs, support X-Star. Okay, so an LPVO or low power variable optic is exactly what it sounds like. Low power, in this case, starting at one X for close range. It's very close to the native magnification of your eye and going up to six X. Variable or adjustable to any magnification between one and six with a throw of a lever and optic because that's what it is They're easily identified by their small front objective you lens. You got a small objective lens Piss off small objective lens and a larger rear eyepiece lens with proportions like these Why don't they just call it a periscope missed opportunity much? So why would you choose this over a red dot with a magnifier a few reasons in most cases the magnification will exceed that of a red dot magnifier LPVOs are typically between 4x me and 8x for their highest magnification, though the trend is continuing and offering higher magnifications, especially in higher end units, up to 10x like the Vortex Razor and the EOTech Voodoo, or even 12x like the Addable Hybrid 12. And who knows how high they'll get? I mean, they can get really high, man. To be fair, Addable refers to their 12x as a medium variable. Red dot magnifiers, on the other hand, are typically 3x, though they do go higher like 6x. Part of that has to do with the magnification affecting the dot. The higher the magnification, the higher MOA or the bigger the dot appears in your view. Likewise, the fixed magnifications at just 1 and 3 or 1 and 6 offer less flexibility. This Burris, on the other hand, is a second focal plane, which means the reticle stays the same size throughout the range of magnification and offers infinite adjustment between 1 and 6. If it was a first focal plane, the reticle would increase as the size of the magnification increases. Which one is best for you? Try them both if you can. 
What I like about second focal plane is that if I crank the magnifier and then put it up to my eye, I know what to expect for the size of the reticle. LPVOs also don't suffer from potential starbursting like red dots. If you have astigmatism like myself, that can be an issue. Once you add a magnifier on said red dot, it just makes a splotchy dot splotchier. Kind of like how modern rap isn't any better as it gets louder. Damn! And though an LPVO will often feature an illuminated reticle, the reticle is typically physically on the glass and won't disappear if the battery dies, like a red dot. On the flip side, get it, because like magnifiers flip the side. It's definitely a no for me though. Red dots are typically lighter, faster, brighter, and more forgiving. For instance, the eye box of the LVPO has less relief than a red dot. If you don't look through it mostly straight on or the right distance from the scope, you get a shadow-like interference in your view, which can be a problem if you're not locked down on a shooting bench. Okay, so is anyone still watching? No? Great. Let's get into the Burris. Now, ideally, I'd be comparing this to another LPVO, so there'd be some degree of, this is a better optic for $400, or others do it better for $400. But this is more of a subjective approach and a testimonial of my experience with it and LPVOs, especially since I've almost exclusively used red dots until now. But after taking a long-range class at Strategic Edge in Middle Tennessee with Tony Schenkel, I'm more interested in the ability to reach out farther and more accurately and having a carbine setup that is more adaptable and has as little compromises as possible, or at least making sure those compromises have a good trade-off, like range. Anyways, the glass on the Burris appears to be plenty clear and of good quality. Yes, you can spend more money to get clearer glass, but this doesn't have noticeable distortion, and I think it's good enough for most shooters. Likewise, the eye box is not nearly as punishing as I expected for a budget-friendly offering. And only when I was on the go and in a very compromised posture, there's gotta be a better way to say that, did I struggle to find the right alignment. The main reticle is clear and easy to acquire. The grid is Milradian or MRAD as opposed to Minitive Angle or MOA. If you're not familiar with those, I'm going to include a great explainer article from Pew Pew Tactical below. The grid is also designed specifically for 223 and 556 drop rate, so bear that in mind if you're shopping for a 22 long rifle plinkster or 308 battle rifle. The main shape of the reticle is good and is a fast chi sheet within 100 yards. I really like the chevron of the primary arms ACSS optics, but this setup works well. The smaller markings will incrementally take you out to about 600 yards, which is a pretty long way for an AR. Most of the shooting that we did was on the go and within 100 yards. Oh, dude, my freaking bipod just broke. Illumination was decent in broad daylight at a setting of 10, which is where mine lives at, but it's not nearly as bright as a red dot. The controls are great. The windage and elevation knobs are easy to read, and the audible clicks are clear and defined. The caps are a good quality and are easy to remove, except for the cap over the battery door, which was not easy to remove, and the included documentation didn't offer any kind of tips. So after chewing up my fingernails and cursing like a sailor, a forum search revealed that the easiest method was to apply pressure directly down on the cap, lots of it, and then rotate. The battery door shares real estate with the reticle illumination control, and I really appreciate the off position between each brightness setting. So once you find the setting you want, you can just make a one-click adjustment to turn it off rather than cycling all the way through and forgetting where you had it. The magnification throw lever is also easy to grab and provides a good balance of speed without protruding way out and potentially catching and moving as you move around. What's really clever is the grooves around the magnification control have a dovetail design, and you can remove the throw lever and move it wherever you want, onto another slot, up, down. Clever girl. So if you're a lefty and you have it across your chest, it's not poking or moving around on its own. The build quality feels solid, and both the lens and the finish of the body were pretty scratch resistant. Like most durability testing I do, it was unintentional. The optic weighs in at 17.5 ounces, which is right around what other optics of this magnification, tube size, and price point weigh. The PEPR mount is another 10 ounces for a combined 27.5. For reference, a Hollow Sun 510C weighs in at 5 ounces, and the HM3X magnifier is about 10 ounces for a combined 15, or just a little over half the weight of the Burris and the QD mount. Now this seems like a lot, but 12.5 ounces for double the magnification may be an easy trade-off, depending on how you use your rifle. The PEPR QD mount promises to be proper eye position ready, which is a bold claim, like Oreo stating that it's Milk's favorite cookie. I don't know how much acid you have to drop to get deep with milk about what cookie feels best inside it, 
ew, but between the AK, the Bear Creek, and the POF with a riser, the latter was the one that worked best for me, despite not having a good cheek weld on the stock, it was more of a lower chin weld. That could also be because this is just such a sick gun. Still, this is a very high quality quick release, and if you can spring for it, I do recommend it, even if you don't put a Burris optic in it. The two levers stay in place and lock down nicely, and it doesn't feel like it's going to break when you release them. So if this optic will live on multiple guns, or you like to switch setups on your one and holy gun, this is a great option. Burris also includes multiple inserts for its unique mount MOA adjustments. Essentially that means there are different polymer inserts with varying thicknesses, so you can change the cant of the scope, ranging from 5 to 40 MOA, right within the riser. This means you could have a much more zeroed optic without the need for as many windage and elevation clicks. Each bracket has six screws, three on each side for a grand total of 12, which should ensure a solid grip without having to over tighten. I do recommend picking up a measurable torque screwdriver as you'd be surprised just how light 16 to 20 pounds of force is, and you don't want these coming loose either from a wet noodle hand or a strip screw. In conclusion, I can confidently state that the RT6, LPVO, and QDPEPR left me PS and IIOBP. Ringing steel quickly and accurately at various ranges and not seeing a squashed bug on the lens was a joy. I feel like 6X is good for this price, though 8X is starting to trickle down to the pores, so we'll see what's on offer in the near future. MSRP on the RT6 is a little over $400, and the PEPR is about $160, but I was able to find street prices for the RT6 for about $350 and $120 for the mount. Not bad considering the performance, and Burris' forever warranty, which like Vortex's VIP warranty requires no receipt, is transferable, and has a no questions asked policy. Optics you may want to cross shop with are the Vortex Strike Eagle, the Primary Arms SLX, and for a little bit more money, scope out the Wrighton 3 Tactics. Like, comment, subscribe, more Nancy Pelosi lizard jokes, please, and thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Reading Rainbow. Take a look, it's in a book. Reading Rainbow. Shooter ready. Ready. Woo! This. Oh yeah, yeah, ready. Good up. <laughs> this is a Burris RT6 one to six LVPO, and today I'm gonna shoot it. I'm gonna show you its quirks and features, and then I'm gonna stick it up my asshole. <laughs> Tonight. Shvetty.